Does this build carry LFG Grandmasters? Well, our first participant here is Legacy Reaper. Celestial Nighthawk, 100 Resilience, 100 Intellect, Sunshot, Apex Predator, and Rufius Fury. And it looks like a classic Gunslinger setup here for Grandmaster content. Our second Guardian is Sarav. Hopefully I said that right. Uh-oh, we got Transversive Steps, 90 Resilience, and three weapons I haven't seen used in a Grandmaster in a bit. For their solar subclass, Heat Rises, Touch of Flame, Solar Grenades, pretty standard. At least they're on Well of Radiance. But this is exactly why we welcome newbies and help them through a Grandmaster. All right, we killed that Screeb, Proc Jolt here. Fire it off and watch the fireworks happen. Blind these guys. Oh, that's so sweet. The green and blue mixed together is so pretty. Tell me that wasn't cool right there. What are you guys doing back here? Hey, get up here. Let me apply my unravel. Get one kill here, activate my jolt. Oh, that's so much fun to watch. Okay, we gotta unravel this overload, jolt him, and hit him with the rocket. Unravel, jolt, rocket. It's just gonna disappear. That's pretty freaking sweet. Applying these guys and just start going off with Jolt on my weapon. Let's get this unstoppable in here though. The Jolt should stun the unstoppable. Apply it. Yep, there's the stun. Actually, we're going back over to this group of enemies. The last thing I want in this boss room is let my two teammates get overrun. Oh, I don't know what he's doing up there. All right, that's Legacy that went down. Let's hit this rocket. All right, come on, Sarov. Get that res. No, no, float back. Oh, you got him. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, you got him. Nice. Let's hit the boss with the rocket. Get some added damage there. Take care of this next spawn that's spawning in. Get our jolt going on our weapon. And just fry them all with Joel. Now we definitely had to help a newbie through the Grandmaster here. 22 kills, Legacy had 160 and I had 300. But he really needed those Ascendant Shards. So I was happy to help out. At least he was really nice about it. We're going in for the big old Titan Slam. Let's blind everything down here. Nice, one more slam. All right, my teammates just need to stay alive. I'll just keep slamming them. Slam, slam, run, Legacy, run. No. All right, got that stun. I'm gonna stun this one more time. We'll go pick him up. I'm coming, Legacy, I'm coming for you. That should stun the Unstoppable again with a rocket on him. Just make sure to kill this one. And then we'll definitely kill the second one now that we have a well down here. Now, if you're wondering what I was using in this Grandmaster to get those 300 kills and help Sarav to his Grandmaster clear, well, we're on the good old Arc Titan. And for the two aspects, we have Knockout and Touch of Thunder. Knockout doesn't play a huge part, but Touch of Thunder does allow our Flashbang Grenade to admit an additional blinding flash on Bounce. And we are taking the Flashbang Grenade because it only has a minute and 30 second cooldown and it stuns Unstoppable Champions for us. We do take Thunderclap and we also take Thruster. For the Super, I like Fist of Havoc, especially to deal with Unstoppable Champions with blinding. And it also can clear a ton of enemies for you, especially Red Bar enemies. Now for the fragments, we take Spark of Resistance. This just gives us a 25% damage reduction when we're near enemies. Spark of Shock, so it allows our arc grenades to jolt targets. This will stun Overload Champions as well. So this week's Grandmaster, which is Birthplace of the Vile, having a Flash Bling Grenade that handles Unstoppable, and then also apply Jolt with it, means that you can stun both champions with one grenade, which is really nice. And also we just love that Jolt debuff for added damage on a single target and to clear enemies all around it. We're also going to play more in Dionic Traces and Blinding with Spark of Discharge, where our Arc Weapon Final Blows have a chance to create an Ionic Trace, and then Spark of Beacons. While we're Amplified, which to become Amplified, you just need to get kills with your Arc Weapon, which is very simple. Our Special Weapon Final Blows will create a Blinding Explosion. For your stats on the build, you want to aim for 100 Resilience. That's the first one that's most important. And then you can spec into Discipline and a third stat of your choice, either Recovery or Strength. Now for the weapons on the build, in your primary, take a Strand Weapon, which is going to allow us to apply the Horde Shuttle and Unraveling together for added damage. And a Hand Cannon is the best to stun Unstoppable Champions. For your secondary, you want to take Indebted Kindness. I actually farmed out a roll for Volt Shot finally, 
and Volt Shot plays so well into this overall build and also on any other subclass. This is a great weapon to get. Now, when you get a kill and reload and help Volt Shot proct and you hit a Overload Champion, that will actually stun the Overload Champion as well. So really intrinsically, it has the ability to stun Overload Champions and this will stun barriers this season with Anti-Barrier Sidearm. So a really great weapon. And then we take Dragon's Breath in our heavy. You guys know how strong Dragon's Breath is. And when we combine that with Overload Rocket Launcher, another way to stun Overloads. So here is Unstoppable Champions, Overload Champions, Overload Champions, Unstoppable and Overload Champions, and Unstoppable Champions. So a ton of different ways to stun all of your champions, which is really important in Grandmasters, especially if you're LFG, because you'll come across a lot of people who don't have the ability to stun champions for you. Now for our exotic, we are taking Heart of Inmost Light. I did run the build with Eternal Warrior as well, but overall Heart of Inmost Light was just better. I didn't need the extra 25% damage bonus from Eternal Warrior on my Indebted Kindness because it already hits really hard and kills things as quick as I need it to. So I went with more ability uptime, especially for those blinding grenades because they are so important. Now for the mods on the build on your helmet, Harmonic Siphon, so the arc weapon create orbs of power. And then you take a heavy ammo finder and a special ammo finder. You want to keep your Indebted Kindness up and your Dragon's Breath. Harmonic Loader to reload that Indebted Kindness quicker to activate Volt Shot even quicker. Firepower to create orbs of power from our grenade and impact induction so our powered melee attacks can reduce our grenade cooldown. On the chest piece, you take a harmonic reserves for more ammo in that indebted kindness and then avoid resist and an arc resist. On the boots, absolution and innervation for ability cooldown. We want to get that grenade back as quick as possible and then a recuperation. So every time you pick up an orb of power, you're going to heal a nice chunk of health. On the class item, which is really important, is special finisher. As soon as you get three armor charges, finish any enemy and you'll create special ammo for yourself and your fire team. This keeps that indebted kindness up with ammo. Then we also take a reaper mod because since we are dodging with our thruster, we'll be able to spawn an extra orb of power every 10 seconds and a bomber. So every time we dodge with that thruster, we just activate more grenade energy coming back to us. Again, for weapons and indebted kindness with Volt Shot is amazing. If you guys have not farmed this out, go get it. I know the arc subclass does not have a strong emphasis from the artifact, but we make up for that by adding Unraveling Orbs and Horde Shuttle into the overall build, which as you can see in the gameplay, the green and blue mixed together is so much fun. It's a ton of damage and the jolt, the unravel and the threadlings popping out is just a really cool synergy to play with. Also, when it comes to unstoppables and overloads together in a Grandmaster, Arc is really strong because of how I went over the blinding grenade combined with the jolting fragment. And then if you pair that with a way to get your abilities back quickly and having that grenade available with hordes of enemies that spawn in or champions that spawn in or champions you need to deal with, it's just going to make your life a lot easier. So you guys that are rocking double primaries, stop doing that. All I see are double primaries and grandmasters and there are workarounds around it as long as you set up the build properly and use the right weapons with it. Essentially, what you should think about when it comes to stunning champions, have one primary weapon that stuns a champion and then either have a special weapon or a heavy that can stun the other champion or have it built into your subclass to stun the other champion, which is why Ark works so well against this Grandmaster. The next video I'm going to do is an Ark Warlock, and then I'm going to try to get to the Ark Hunter because they really do perform so well in this particular Grandmaster, especially the Ark Warlock that I have for you guys coming out next. So hopefully you look forward to that. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.